Shrinking away from death is something unhealthy and abnormal that robs the second half of life of its purpose. Sometimes, indeed, there is such a discrepancy between the genius and his human qualities that one has to ask oneself whether a little less Allen might not have been better. In my case, Spielgrim's progress consisted in my having to climb down a thousand ladders until I could reach out my hand to the little clod of earth that I am. The shoe that fits one person pinches another. There is no recipe for living that suits all cases. Follow that will and that way which experience confirms to be your own. Mistakes are, after all, the foundations of truth, and if a man does not know what a thing is, it is at least an increase in knowledge if he knows what it is not. It all depends on how we look at things, and not how they are in themselves. The creation of something new is not accomplished by the intellect, but by the play instinct acting from inner necessity. The creative mind plays with the objects it loves. The Christian missionary may preach the gospel to the poor naked heathen, but the spiritual heathen who populate Europe have as yet heard nothing of Christianity. Through pride we are ever deceiving ourselves, but deep down below the surface of the average conscience a still, small voice says to us, something is out of tune. The man who promises everything is sure to fulfill nothing, and everyone who promises too much is in danger of using evil means in order to carry out his promises, and is already on the road to perdition. For a young person, it is almost a sin, or at least a danger, to be too preoccupied with himself. But for the aging person, it is a duty and a necessity to devote serious attention to himself. The collective unconscious consists of the sum of the instincts and their correlates, the archetypes. Just as everybody possesses instincts, so he also possesses a stock of archetypal images. The least of things with a meaning is worth more in life than the greatest of things without it. In all chaos there is a cosmos, in all disorder a secret order. Our heart glows, and secret unrest gnaws at the root of our being. Dealing with the unconscious has become a question of life for us. We shall probably get nearest to the truth if we think of the conscious 
and personal psyche as resting upon the broad basis of an inherited and universal psychic disposition which is as such unconscious, and that our personal psyche bears the same relation to the collective psyche as the individual to society. A scream is always just that a noise and not music. Grounded in the natural philosophy of the Middle Ages, alchemy formed a bridge. On the one hand into the past, to Gnosticism, and on the other into the future, to the modern psychology of the unconscious. Man's task is to become conscious of the contents that press upward from the unconscious. Knowing your own darkness is the best method for dealing with the darknesses of other people. The pendulum of the mind alternates between sense and nonsense, not between right and wrong. One looks back with appreciation to the brilliant teachers, but with gratitude to those who touched our human feelings. The curriculum is so much necessary raw material, but warmth is the vital element for the growing plant and for the soul of the child. A psychoneurosis must be understood, ultimately, as the suffering of a soul which has not discovered its meaning. Resistance to the organized mass can be effected only by the man who is as well organized in his individuality as the mass itself. We are born at a given moment, in a given place, and, like vintage years of wine, we have the qualities of the year and of the season of which we are born. Astrology does not lay claim to anything more. A man who has not passed through the inferno of his passions has never overcome them. As far as we can discern, the sole purpose of human existence is to kindle a light in the darkness of mere being. When an inner situation is not made conscious, it appears outside as fate. We are in a far better position to observe instincts in animals or in primitives than in ourselves. This is due to the fact that we have grown accustomed to scrutinizing our own actions and to seeking rational explanations for them. Often the hands will solve a mystery that the intellect has struggled with in vain. Knowledge rests not upon truth alone, but upon error also. If there is anything that we wish to change in the child, we should first examine it and see whether it is not something that could better be changed in ourselves. Children are educated by what the grown-up is and not by his talk.
Just as we might take Darwin as an example of the normal extraverted thinking type, the normal introverted thinking type could be represented by Kant. The one speaks with facts, the other relies on the subjective factor. Darwin ranges over the wide field of objective reality. Kant restricts himself to a critique of knowledge. Even a happy life cannot be without a measure of darkness, and the word happy would lose its meaning if it were not balanced by sadness. It is far better take things as they come along with patience and equanimity. Who has fully realized that history is not contained in thick books, but lives in our very blood. Nobody, as long as he moves about among the chaotic currents of life, is without trouble. Thank you for watching. Let us know what quotes you think are remarkable in the comment section below. Hit the like button and subscribe to our channel if you enjoyed it.